You're listening to the Vanu Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to the coercion of the state and the servile society. Visit our website for free resources to aid you in your pursuit of self-liberation, old Vanu publications, podcasts, guest articles, and much more. Go to vanupodcast.com. And now your hosts, Shane and Jason. Podcast, a podcast making you invulnerable to the coercion of the state and the servile society. Uh, I'm your host, Shane, coming to you from the Free Republic of Pasnia, the Self Liberator's Paradise. Uh, the website is pasnia.com. That's P A Z N I A dot com. Uh, so it's currently Thursday, October 14th, and uh, we've just uh, we've just adjusted back to uh, normal life here after having Self Liberators here for uh, about nine days for Vanufest 2, concluding uh, last Tuesday. Uh, yes, and adjusted back. Uh, Justin, back with you for another what I believe to be uh, important and highly interesting discussion uh, sparked by a fellow Vanuan in the Pasnia Committee of Correspondence uh, community chat. Uh, if you're not there yet, please do consider joining. Uh, that's t.me forward slash Pasnia chat. And of course, I'll put links to uh, all the relevant things in the show notes. But uh, that's the link to, uh, to join uh, and uh, begin building your reputation in the second realm. Uh, anyway, a month or so back, a pseudonymous individual named JJ uh, brought up the terrific Crypto Agoras novella, uh, hashtag Agora, and inquired as to whether or not the idea of, a no- of the no-tell, uh, not a hotel, uh, had ever been seriously considered as a service. Uh, me and maybe some others basically told him no, but that it might be time to start pondering yeah, such a possibility. Um, new opportunities and and uh, all that sort of stuff, and just kind of a, a need for it too. So today we'll we'll do some more theorizing uh, as to how such a hotel could come into existence, uh, what the inside of an hotel room could look like, uh, policies and procedures, uh, marketing such a second realm establishment, uh, the role of technology and crypto anarchy play, uh, and the security and maintenance of these areas, uh, the utility of proxy merchants and uh, uh, in securing the hotel and potentially other proxy merchant services. Uh, pricing and profitability, and uh, much more, I'm sure. But uh, that should give you a good enough idea what's on the docket for today. And uh, as mentioned above, for a fictional demonstration or example, please do check out hashtag Agora. Uh, it's linked at libertyunderattack.com forward slash second realm uh, or there at vaniopodcast.com forward slash second realm clips. But of course, I'll, like I said, I'll put all, all the relevant links in the show notes. And I'll also mention that uh, my currently unreleased fiction book um, that I haven't worked on in like a year and a half now does have a no tell in it. Um, an hotel in, um, oh gosh, uh, Prague, actually. Um, but uh, that isn't out yet and uh, won't be a, a topic of discussion for this evening. But um, yeah, there, there are some fictional examples of these uh, for sure, um, which uh, which we'll talk about. But uh, anyway, without any more rambling, JJ, welcome to the Vani Podcast, man. Uh, how are things going? Yeah, they're going pretty good today. Yeah, it looks like it's uh, starting to have a little bit of snow outside, but you know, that's, that's standard for, you know, the great white north there. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm really excited to be here. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I guess first off, um, I'm, I'm a little curious and I'm sure some of our, some of our audiences too, uh, would you mind providing a brief introduction? Uh, who, who are you, uh, a bit about your liberated lifestyle, liberated lifestyle and, uh, how you found Vanu and Pazni? And of course, um, share as much or as, uh, as little as you like. Um, we'll just kind of start with that. Sounds good. Uh, so I, I classify myself as a sort of a survivalist slash prepper, um, and I've been that way for quite a while. Um, you know, I I've uh, you know I went for the full spectrum of the the you know so-called uh, republicanism all the way through uh, to where I currently am at, which is uh, you know the the political philosophy of uh, uh, anarchism. Um, the uh, as uh, the no, I'm sorry, I'm trying to process my <laughs> thoughts <good>. here <laughs> as far as my uh liberated lifestyle i'm not where i'd like to be uh unfortunately you know things don't always work in the world and you know covid has pushed back my plans for uh strategic relocation um so i have to wait till uh the the next the next summer to to be able to strategically relocate um but i already have taken that first step towards being self-liberated i I was able to get rid of my uh, just over broke. I mean, my job, uh, and uh, I'm now uh, in charge of my own my own life, which is awesome. It, it is a it's an amazing feeling to be free there. Um, I originally had found uh, Vanu and Pasnia um, by 
you know, going through uh, podcasts. I, I, you know, as a, as a, you know, a, a tradesman, you know, oftentimes I have hours that I'm working mm -hmm. and I don't have the, uh, you know, I, music is just, to me, it's, it's, it's kind of annoying a little bit sometimes. I mean, I like music, but uh, I, I like to continually feed my brain, you know? And so uh, I came across uh, Liberty Under Attack and I was like, oh, wow, this is, this is really good. And uh, while I had started from the beginning, uh, you know, you started uh, about halfway through, I think, is when when uh, we started talking about uh, uh, Vanu, uh, Vanu and and going from there on to uh, what is now the Vanu Von podcast. Uh, you know, I've been just just been kind of eating it up there. It's a it's a really good, uh, a re really good uh, uh, media there for for everyone. Right on. Awesome. Well, that that's that's great to hear. And, and as of late, and I've been I've been, I guess, even more appreciative of that. But coming across folks who have been listening, well, I guess, longtime listeners, not just of Bonnie, but back to, to UA, too. So it's nice to to come across, uh, uh, to I guess, to, to to make more of acquaint of, of an acquaintanceship with uh, with my longtime listeners. And uh, you are you're exactly correct. And I, 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 I make sure to bring this up as often as I possibly can. But uh, you mentioned, you know, quitting your job, you're just over broke. I mean, that is the, the biggest control the survival society has over, over individuals is time. And uh, the way that time is, is calculated nowadays is in, in terms of money. So, um, yeah, that, that first step of financial independence is absolutely huge. And uh, it's one of the most liberating things that's, that one can do is, is to, uh, to, to exit the, the first realm in that area. And then it just kind of snowballs from there is, is kind of my experience. But, um but uh, yeah, anyway, I guess uh, um, so. You you came across uh, those podcasts, and hashtag Agora came up at some point. Uh, I guess um, why? Uh, I guess why we talked a little bit about this before um, we started recording. But um, why do you think the the no tell discussion is a good one to have uh, at, at this moment in time? Well, I think I think I like a lot of this this new territory that we're exploring with uh, Pasnia and, and the Vanu is, you know, it's 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 something that has to be explored before it can happen. You know, uh, we can't just all just go snap our fingers and boom, you know, we have, we have the second realm, we have to build that. And I think part of that building process is kind of going through the mental exercise uh, as if we were a no-tell owner, you know, and saying, okay, how would that look like? And, and, and share what we think. And then we get that feedback from, you know, potential customers as well as maybe other potential, uh, you know, no-tell uh, owners and creating that, that, that whole Pasnia uh, network that we were, that we, we talk about, I think oftentimes uh, so that we can, we can kind of really nail down this idea and get it to market as quickly as we possibly can. Yeah, yeah, certainly, certainly. And, uh, uh, you know, I talk, uh, you know, action is obviously a, a critically important part of Vanu, but the, the uh, you, as you're saying, the, the theory is important too. I mean, that's how um, these things are going to get fleshed out. And, uh, you know, back when we were theorizing about permanent autonomous zones and all that, Pasnia was not even an idea in my head, um, <clears throat> as far as I know, not in my conscious, at least, in my conscious mind, at least. Um, but uh, so, so, yeah, a lot of this theorizing, you don't really know where it's going to where it's going to end up, um, what it's exactly going to look like. Um, it's kind of, it's hard to, hard to foresee, but at, at the, um, at the very least, yeah, get, get the ideas out there, get, uh, get the, um, yeah, get the conversation started and, uh, see what transpires with, uh, um, you know, knowledgeable, um, knowledgeable and, uh, committed self-liberators. So I guess, uh, to provide a, a brief overview, or I guess to even before providing a brief overview, um, the part from hashtag Agora, um, where the no is mentioned and kind of the most pertinent parts, um, it's only like a page and a half. So I figure I'll start with that real quick. Um, to to yeah to start our our, our our conversation then we can I guess more um, more more thoroughly go over the idea uh, but yeah this is from the the novella hashtag Agora quote um, Katie's pretty much unconscious her left arm is around my shoulder her right arm around Dent's shoulder and we drag slash carry her out of the bar outside Michael Faust and Paul are waiting in front of a five series BMW engine running she's so shit faced Faust says and smiles yeah she might have had a little she might have a little substance abuse problem I say. Or three, Michael says. Paul doesn't say anything. He just looks at his watch. I have to hurry. Can you bring her home? He says. Not home, but she can stay in the no-tell with new guy, Denton says. He turns to me. Promise me you won't rape her, he says. Do I look like a rapist? I say a little outraged. They never do. Whatever. I promise. What's a no-tell? It's, it's, uh, it's not a hotel, Michael hints, and it's where you're sleeping. Paul gets into the driver's seat, and Michael and Faust get in, too. They speed off. Denton shifts a little, moving Katie's weight on his back. I grab her arm to not let her fall. What about her bike, I say? She can get it tomorrow. I'm not her babysitter. 
He shoulders his half of Katie's weight and starts walking. He's stronger than he looks. We drag Slash Carrier for only about five minutes when Dent stops in front of some residential-looking house. He pulls out his cell phone and types a few things. After fuzzing with it for about a minute, the doors make a quiet clicking sound. He puts the phone away and pushes the door open. I put my arm under Katie's knees and carry her fairy tale style up the stairs. Too bad she can't see me right now. What's with the phone, I say. That was impressive. I booked an hotel room, Dent says. With your phone? I pant a little. Thank fuck she's so light. I don't think I could have carried Julie up the stairs. It's a website. You make an online transaction and you get a room. What about the remote door? What do you expect, a doorman? Do you know how many embedded servers I can link to an electronic lock for even a month worth of paying a single person? We've arrived at the top of the stairs and Denton leads me at the end of a corridor. There's no numbers on the door or anything like a hotel would have. Katie's feet drag on the floor as I shove her through the, shove her through the door. Uh, there's a two-person bed inside and I plop her down on the mattress. Denton checks some things in the room. He seems very methodical. Okay, he says, there's everything you need. Toothbrush, uh, toothbrush, paste, soap, towels. Don't worry about the reservation. We'll talk tomorrow. Uh, thanks, I say. Don't worry, it's only it's only 10 euros. 10 euros for this room? Sure. 10 euros times 10 residents times 30 days equals 3,000 euros a month. There's no restaurant and no hotel bar, though. Huh, I say. Then, you think I should wake her or undress her or put a blanket over her or something? Yeah, a blanket's probably a good idea. We wouldn't want her to get a cold. Uh, let me see if there's anything else relevant here. I think the next is just discourse, and people can go read the book if they want to. Um, I guess the other thing, uh, yeah, the other thing, there's a, um, okay, skipping forward a little bit. On his way out, he points to a laptop sitting on the desk. There's a Whisper PC prototype. If you want to surf the net or check your email, feel free. So, um, end quote, that's the, the very short section from Hashtag Agora. Uh, but the Whisper PC being what we would we would know, um, I guess in our circles as a ghost pad or a, or something along those lines. So, yeah, that's kind of the the, the loose overview of the idea. Um, I guess uh, an unoccupied or I guess unattended, um, you know, uh, uh, building. Um, yeah, an uh, yeah an unattended building uh, that people can rent. Um, you know, via phone. Um, using technology and crypto anarchy to, um, I guess, remotely. Um, surveil monitor and and i guess uh, run this 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 place in this operation so um i guess i'll turn it over to you do you have any anything else you'd like to add in terms of uh, the overview or, or that excerpt from hashtag agora uh, no i think i think that <clears throat> excuse me uh, i think a lot of what what starts out i mean this is basically the 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 gist of what we have available in in hashtag agora mm -hmm. uh to kind of define what the notel is and and I think that was that was really like one of the things that really got me interested in the idea um, as someone who is, you know, is constantly looking for, you know, potential income streams uh, that, you know, how would that look like and 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 what we're uh, what it would what we would uh, do with that and how, you know, just all these questions came up. And so I think that that's a that's a pretty good start right there uh, mm -hmm. as far as uh, I, I don't really have anything else to add to the intro. OK. Gotcha. So I, I think the first the first two things I'll start with, um, or at least mention, is uh, I guess the the acquisition of the property. Off, these will probably be um, if they're going to be no tells. If they have to be disguised, they're probably going to be in cities. I think it just kind of goes without saying, um, or maybe in a maybe obscured in a residential. We've talked a lot about res, you know, the big residential commercial or the big commercial buildings, uh, industrial buildings that you could hide a lot of shit in. Um, but uh, there, there's pro it's probably not going to be able to be openly advertised um, since they'll be in cities. And so the other thing worth worth mentioning right at the outset is, especially like looking at the course of Airbnb. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter what industry rights uh, industry, right? I mean, the state just likes to, to to regulate whatever the hell it can get its hand on. Um, but yeah, the state definitely at this time likes to regulate the hospitality and, and things like Airbnb. So um, yeah, these would at least be gray markets, um, maybe black in some jurisdictions. So. Um, whether they whether they be fronts, um, fronts would might be needed for for it to be set up, or um, really just uh, like I said, the the role of the proxy merchant. I think the the proxy merchant, um, the the individual who's interested in opening up a hotel and who actually goes about doing it, um, I think that they might do it as an entrepreneurial venture, um, at least at least uh, in some part. Um, See, so yeah, I think the proxy merchant role is kind of a necessity, um, especially since there's going to be there's going to be um, so-called private property. There's going to be a title. Um, there's going to be some interaction and interfacing with the state, and uh, um, obviously in this in this great in this regulated industry such as hospitality, 
um, or you know hotels, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, I think those are those are a, a couple a couple good starting points. Um, is uh, yeah mentioning the proxy merchant role and um, yeah that these are going to have to be as per the name, as per how it was presented. Hashtag Agora, they're going to have to be hidden um, or at least discreet in some way. Yeah, I think along with that, I think um, I, I think I like the concept of uh, you know hiding in plain sight. Um, I think that you know if we're if we're looking at the Notel, um, I, you know I know I know Europe is stylized a little differently, and we and and hashtag Agora takes place you know uh, I believe it's in Germany, and so I think you know for for a proxy merchant to be able to maintain this thing and keep it going. Uh, it kind of has to be dressed up either as something that it isn't or something that it is. And I think that, you know, what we're looking at is what I would say is, you know, a, a, a hotel. I mean, obviously, that's that's what we're talking about. But what is a hotel? Well, basically, a hotel is also very similar in design to, uh, you know, an apartment complex. Uh, you know, so you could hide in plain sight, I think, in that way. And then maybe you have maybe you have some, you know, regular tenants uh, that are, that are occupying, but, you know, you keep, you keep a couple of these, uh, apartments free for, you know, uh, folks, uh, to, to rent from you. Mm -hmm. Um, it all really depends, I think on your marketplace and, and supply and demand. Um, but you know, I, I, th I've also thought about, you know, yeah, why not get, you know, a four or five bedroom, uh, home, uh, the, the, the problem with that, I think, honestly, even in cities is, nosy neighbors, um, which is going to decrease your, your mean time to harassment, uh, and even from the bludge. So I think honestly, the best disguise would be an apartment complex, um, and, and not necessarily advertising it to the general public that you have rooms rent, uh, but more, you know, maybe, like I said, have some of the rooms that are occupied by full-time tenants and just, you know, letting the tenants know that, Hey, you know, we do, we do offer you know, services by, uh, the week, you know, there's a lot of hotels, uh, I guess it'd be motels technically that, that do operate on this whole, um, uh, market where they are there. Yes. They're, they're there for a day, a week, a couple of weeks, but they also do, uh, by the month as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's where, especially during COVID, uh, that we're seeing a lot of folks, a lot of hotels getting extra income by, you know, saying, Hey, yeah, we'll, we'll do a month to month contract. Yeah, I think that. Yeah, I think that's because um, I obviously like the no tell the no tell role, um, and you know in the free so, you know in a free society, obviously that would they wouldn't necessarily they would need to be disguised. Um, so these are transitionary. These are I guess transitionary things and I guess services too. Um, so yeah, I think that's a that's a really good. Um, obviously, if if it's a proxy merchant who has interactions with the first and the second realm, um, then. Um, I mean, yeah, having that above having that above ground um, source of income in terms of the apartments um, and also the cover, I think is is I, I agree. I think that's probably the um, yeah, I think that's probably the the best way to do it. Obviously, it just comes down to finding the the, the right proxy or not really finding, but the right proxy merchant hearing this episode and uh, deciding to, to to go about doing this because um, obviously there's there's going to be um, especially you know in like in, in apartments um, apartments um, there's probably going to be additional. Um, you know, reg regulations and additional interactions with, with coercers. So that's 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 just worth worth noting. And, and yeah, leaving you know a handful of comp apartments open for, um, for self liberators, I think is is great. And, and they can just blend in with uh, with the apartment traffic. So I think, uh, um, yeah, I think that's a, that's a, a really great start in, in terms of the thought experiment. Yeah, I, I don't disagree, and and I think again, it's 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 what we're talking about. You know, the the whole well, in prepper circles, we would we would classify it as you know the gray man approach. You know, you want to look like everybody else that's that's around you in order to you know decrease that mean time to or increase that uh, mean time to harassment. Um, you know, and then so like the proxy merchant, I, I I think we all pretty much know that how to buy a buy a home here in the United States or a piece of property, and and we obviously you know, uh, know that within, within that whole structure that, you know, you're going to have to look like everybody else. And I think, um, you know, that, that might look like, uh, as an example for the proxy merchant, um, rather than being a personal owner, you're, you're a, you know, so-called, uh, you know, state owned, uh, business, um, commonly referred to as obtaining a business license. Um, and 
so the property itself would be held by a uh, non-human entity uh, on the registry lists. Uh, and, and that would, I think, honestly uh, add to the whole um, cover too, especially if you have multiple properties. Right. True, true. Uh, and <clears throat> Yeah, I was just gonna, I was just gonna j jump in and make sure I, I like the the uh, the apartment idea. I want to make sure we thought experiment out the other one too. Um, I guess just a, mm -hmm. just a house or, or a house or just some building that's that's repurposed. But um, yeah, yeah, the business license that might add um, that might add another layer to um, yeah another layer to it for sure. Um, I guess in uh, in regards to the actual properties that would be rented um, or available for rent to uh you know self liberators or venuans how do you how do you see um obviously hashtag agora they had the example of you know just a smartphone um smartphone using a phone accessing a website making the payment the doors automatically unlock um whether remotely or automatically and uh they they get the room um how do you how do you uh i guess how do you envision that that playing out um in this hypothetical apartment complex so I, I, I think that uh, a lot of what is in, in hashtag Agora is definitely usable. Um, so as far as locks are going, um, we have such an ability now for these small, tiny computers that can be connected to various different types of, uh, of, of things, if you will, the internet of things. Uh, that would allow you know local control of various things. I mean, already on the marketplace, you know, we have we have door locks that have buttons on them that you can actually recode or add and remove remotely uh, pin numbers, so that you know when a when a uh, a venuan is is has has rented a room for a day or maybe even a couple hours or a week, whatever, when that expires, that code can be pulled out and and basically that that room now be, belongs back to the proxy merchant. Um, and that would also, you know, uh, so that that would be the cheapest way. Now we can go a little bit more intricate and more secure too. I think too, uh, with you know having you know a local wireless network at the uh, on the property that you know nobody knows about because you know they didn't get the email or they didn't get uh, the text or whatever that gives the connection information required to access the uh, uh, the network, which then you know providing. I mean, we can get as complex as, and secure as we want. I mean, I think ultra secure would be, you know, a a a key file that is sent to uh, the the uh, Venuan, and you know, basically they drop that 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 digital key uh, into the the server, and the server will go, okay, here's the list of uh, access options like uh, open outdoor or open the outer door. Um, then they want to get to their room, then they go, okay, open the room and the doors would automatically unlock for them and they could enter, uh, enter them. And as soon as the locks detect that, uh, they've entered, okay, they've checked in. Um, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of finer control that, that can go in there. Um, I think, uh, you know, I think maybe we want to talk about some of the other technology later, or do you want to do that now? Um, I think we, we can go ahead and dive into that now. Obviously, the technology is going to play a role in whatever no-tell we talk about. Um, so it'll be somewhere to visit. But yeah, I think I think we have to talk about the technology too because that's going to be, um, I mean, that's that's going to be predominantly the security and kind of the upkeep of it, right, is, is by way of technology. So yeah, please please do go ahead. Yeah, because technology, I think, for the, for the, uh, uh, the proxy merchant is really the only way to, one, protect the identity of the Venuan, uh, because I think honestly, um, it's one of those things where uh, we we don't we don't want to know who the we don't want to know who our our clients are, um, because that gives us deniability. That gives us the ability to go, you know what? I don't even know who that dude was, and I, I don't know where he's at. Uh, you know, I I literally just you know rented a room for him for a day, you know, and that's that's all I know. I mean, if you know if he was cooking up drugs in there, I didn't know about it. I'm not going to go up to the door and knock on it and go, hey, what are you doing? You cooking up drugs? You know, um, which ho hopefully if they're going to cook up drugs in the room that they at least are a little nonchalant about it and, and can kind of help because, I mean, you know, uh, but I think I think they are the infrastructure. So I have a little bit of a technology background. Um, so the infrastructure, I think, in 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 this idea would probably, you know, wireless is so, so easy to intercept. I, I'm not a big fan of wireless um, because it just it, it is just so easily accessible. 
but I think that we're going to have to have a mixture of the wired and wireless components. I think within the home, within the within the com or within the the, the structure of the building, um, whether that is a home or it is a an apartment complex, because I don't I don't totally discount the the home idea. Um, the, the the issue, of course, like I said, becomes nosy neighbors. But you know, um, if you're in a high des- high density plant, uh, you know, high density place. It, it, it could it could work as well. So basically, you're looking at um, a wired network, uh, you know, each room having, uh, you know, a couple of different electronic devices, perhaps, uh, you know, lights, uh, you know, because you want to be able to, you know, know what's going on. I mean, being able to, you know, shut off lights when there's no one in the room, you know, because let's let's face it, you know, um, it, I think hotels, you know, spend a lot of money on electricity. Uh, it just seems to me um, so. That would be a piece of technology, yeah. Um, and I think honestly, the from once you have that network infrastructure down, um, you've got the wireless locks. Um, I think the next thing would be you know security. Like what what does that look like? Um, I think the biggest the the biggest thing I think a lot of people would like would be cameras, um, not in the private spaces but in the public spaces. Mm-hmm. Um, again, we want to protect we want to protect individual uh, you know privacy. Uh, you know, so if they want to take, uh, you know, uh, they want to take Katie up to their room and, and, you know, have a nice drug party and, uh, you know, um, you know, do what, uh, consenting adults do that's, that's their business. And, and we shouldn't be profiting on that. Um, uh, unless of course, you know, they want to sign a waiver that says we can't, um, you know, to each their own. Mm-hmm. Uh, so obviously cameras, um, I think breaking, I, I think, you know, the, a lot of the typical uh, alarm system kind of things as well could be utilized. Um, you know, we talk about for, for uh, uh, you know, for Venuans. And then we also, you know, pulling ideas from other fictional sources, uh, you know, alongside night, you know, you have this huge mall complex, you know, and you want to have that warning system because let's face it, you know, Venuans have to, they have to have, they have to think security first. And yeah, there, there is, there is always that possibility of that nosy neighbor, always the possibility of you know that random, uh, ins- uh, you know, bludge coming up to the door and wanting to talk to the owner and, and those kind of things, and running into you know a client instead. Um, so I think early warning systems would be really good to have as well. Uh, you know, we we talk about glass breaking sensors. We could also do things like, um, you know, you can you can monitor doors. I mean, it's it's not that hard. Uh, that's how alarm systems pretty much work. So if you had an alarm system, tr- or if you had a door open without a lock being unlocked, well, then you know that you have a break in, and that could be a nice uh, way to you know notify the clients. Um, then, oh, hey, listen, there's a break in in progress. Um, you know, I would love if we could actually, you know, build build a either a, a panic room or uh, some type of. Uh, you know, silent escape or, you know, hidden escape for, for the client. Uh, I think that was something that, you know, people would, that the clients would, would definitely appreciate. Um, even if they're held up in a, in a locked room for, you know, a couple of hours it takes to, to clear out the bludge, mm-hmm. you know, um, and, and then that, you know, once the bludge are gone, you know, being able to, you know, let them know, Hey, the coast is clear. If you want to leave, go ahead and leave, uh, that kind of a thing. Um, and that, that, you know, that whole security, I think, is, is really important. I mean, we, we talk about it often um, as Venuans that, you know, like, as an example, you know, what's my real name, right? Do I have a real name? I don't know. Um, and it's just that that, that building that, that, that shield uh, around you so that, you know, people only know enough uh, to know who you are and to interact with you. Um, and that's... I, I think that's that's what a lot of the new ones would be looking for in my in, in my perspective. Um, so I think security plays a big, huge part in that. Um, the other thing, you know, we, we can also throw in motion sensors. You know, uh, if there isn't supposed to be somebody in the hallway, i.e., a, a door lock hasn't open or a door hasn't opened voluntarily, uh, you know, that could also set up you know an early warning um, for the folks that are in there. Right, right. So, so as you as you said in, um, earlier, the the wireless wireless um, is more vulnerable. Um, it c- kind of seems like the only real vulnerability, um, and I guess just the the hackability of of technology. But um, I mean, there are ways to there are ways there are ways um, around that. Um, 
I guess uh, could, you want to do you, you want to speak a little bit to that vulnerability, um, how that could. Um, I mean, possibly maybe you could use if you have the if it's if we're talking about the apartment complex. Um, you you you'll probably have internet provide that you pro that you provide to your other tenants anyway. Um, so you could just um, I don't know if you could dedicate a portion of that internet, run it through Tor. Um, you know, privacy based. Um, you know, privacy solutions. Maybe even go the. Um, um, oh, what is it called? The. Uh, oh gosh, uh, Paul Rosenberg's uh, Crypto Hippie. Maybe you have one of his, their Crypto Hippie routers or something, um, where all the I guess all the venuance traffic is uh, you know um, ran through um, internet traffic, or maybe it's hidden that way. Um, but I don't know. Do you have any any thoughts on that on on addressing that vulner but that uh, the wireless uh, vulnerability um, with these things, whether it's the doors or the cameras? <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I think everything should be hardwired. Um, you know, you don't want to. You don't. Again, anytime you're you're putting a broadcast signal out there um, that that is a transceiver so that it can both send and receive, there is the possibility of you know uh, of it being tapped. Uh, and and it would be really horrible if you know if the bludge could just you know with their with their scanning technology be able to scan and go oh hey look here here's all the wireless cameras inside so we already know who's coming and who's going. We've already got video recording of all that. I think a lot of that just needs to be hardened just by being wired. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that one of the services that a lot of folks who who are utilizing an hotel are gonna want that internet access like you're talking about. And again, I think that internet access, while in hotels, typically, you know, there's there's not a lot of security there. Oh, it's, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a public, you know, public, it, you know, it, public it, internet. Yeah, essentially, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think I think every uh, I think every Vanuan who has a you know a a ghost pad is not going to be using the wireless anyway. They're going to want a hardline plug-in where they can plug their device in, and maybe they have their own wireless router that they they know and they trust, and it's set up for a VPN. You know, but I think I think yeah I think we would have to at the very least provide that service of having uh, as much of their data protected as possible. Whether it's uh, you know using uh, Tor routing, uh, whether you're using uh, you know fully encrypted uh, uh, connections, uh, you know we talk about VPN, uh, you know you could do a layered uh, a layered upon layered VPN, uh, so that you know you have you have encryption upon encryption, uh, <clears throat> mm -hmm. and I think that could also be a service. So you know while we're while we're sitting here talking about networking and everything as well. You know, uh, we also talk about you know what other services could could the the Notel also provide. You know, so beyond beyond just a room, you know, um, mm -hmm. storage lockers, for example, uh, to to facilitate trade. You know, um, something like uh, and and again, we try to stay away from wireless if we can, but uh, think of it as uh, you know, I think everybody has seen those big large box uh, mailboxes that the postal service uses uh you know and if you were to equip them with electronic locks you know um and and it could be you know uh we, as as is is in uh hashtag agora uh the the this idea of open transactions this idea of electronic contracts so you know you could you could literally you know go to the to the box put your trade item in there uh, you know, because you've already established a, a a partner trading partner, and you kind of want to maximize your security by both of you not being there at the same time, giving deniability to either party. I didn't know what it was, um, you know. So putting it putting it in there, and then you know, once you've received your payment, then you can tell the box that's, that it can go ahead and unlock when brilliant. the person's there. Yeah. So that's the, the yeah. They, so in, in the second round book, they talk about I guess the double blind trading. Um, you could make this totally mm -hmm. you could make this totally digital with like a two of three multi sig with Bitcoin or something. Um, <clears throat> that's crazy. Oh, yeah, just sure. basically just utilize like utilize what Open Bazaar or Bisc would utilize in terms of um, yeah peer to peer exchange yeah two of three multi sig, and then yeah you've got a physical um, you know a physical trade. Um, yeah, that's that's incredible. Yeah, I like that. I really like that. Yeah, and then that's what's really great about these electronic contracts too is the fact that you know it requires both parties to one agree, both parties to also confirm that the transaction's been completed. So you know the 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 computer that maybe is down in the basement running the software, um, obviously encrypted partitions, uh, you know no local access, uh, 
you know, um, remote access only by, you know, multi-layered uh, encryption security, all of which is, is, is currently possible now. Um, and uh, so, so basically that, that becomes that, that third party in the transaction, the, the, uh, as open transaction talks about the notary, you know, saying, okay, uh, yes. Okay. You've, you've got this item, you're offering it for this amount of money. Uh, both parties have agreed to the, the product. They've agreed to the price. Um, you know, the first person, uh, goes there, uh, as soon as they get their payment, they sign, okay, yeah, I got my payment. And then the next part that, then the, the person receiving the, the, uh, uh, property would then go, yep, I received my property and, and then the transactions complete. Um, again, it, you know, with, with this, with this, op this open concept, obviously you want to be careful with who you're trading with because yeah, there's always going to be a possibility that you're going to get ripped off, you know, um, and the money wouldn't be released until both parties agreed. The property would have to be released to be inspected by the buyer. Um, I, I don't see any way around that, but you know, if the buyer releases the property, then obviously then the money automatically is automatically released to the, to the seller. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, and then, uh, so yeah, I think that, that, that kind of encompasses that whole idea of, of, well, I, I like to call it a dead drop. Um, but, uh, with a little bit more security. Yeah. Um, a, yeah, a dead drop. Um, I mean, it could just be, you could have those same things serve as supply caches for, um, for nomadic manuans. Um, mm -hmm. possibly even, um, I don't know, maybe, it, maybe it can be a, um, you know, a first realm address for some folks, like for mail forwarding. Um, and some of these might be more applicable mm -hmm. to the, mm -hmm. to the, you know, like a residential or commercial area, but it could still be utilized here, I think. Um, mm -hmm. beyond that, I know, uh, there's, there's one individual who, um, one individual who offered, uh, who has offered their, uh, you know, a, 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 a city squat spot for like a van nomad, um, on like the second mm -hmm. realm directory. And he offers, he offers, you know, some various proxy merchant services, um, to people who might be traveling through. So I think that could be, that could be the same at, at these places, at, at these two, if, um, the Venuan doesn't want to, you know, interact with the first realm, they could... Um, they could pay someone for, you know, um, you know, anonymous errand running or delivery service. Um, you know, if, if, if a, uh, mm -hmm. proxy merchant wanted to do something like that, um, or, you know, overnight city squat spots, maybe the van, maybe the, uh, Vanuan doesn't need a room. Maybe they just need somewhere to park their van. Um, so, I mean, like all these sure. things are, all these things are possible, um, plausible. Um, and even beyond that, I think you mentioned at least a couple of these, but, um, whether it's the apartments, um, whether it's, you know, the commercial or the, the residential, um, variety, uh, like data centers, um, like data centers, uh, Bitcoin nodes, mesh network nodes, uh, etc. Um, if pe people could connect to those, um, like, yeah, you're still trusting somebody, but at least you're trusting somebody within, within, you know, the Pazian network, for example. Um, so people could, uh, yeah, the data center, people could connect to, um, that Bitcoin node. So only that Bitcoin node knows their, you know, their pub, you know, their, um, you know, their full pub key or whatever it is that accesses all their, all their addresses. Um, the yeah so I, I think that's another another poss another possibility um further depending upon regardless whether it's residential commercial or you know the, the apartment um hacker spaces too i think if there's a, if there's spare rooms so they, they could be rented for like a for like a day-long event um and i think that'd be a, that'd be a really privacy focused like crypto anarchy cypherpunk type of way to run one of those things so just to have them be have them be at different um you know different locations like that so i don't know those those there were some things that uh, at least came up for me that's that's actually really awesome you know um well i i hadn't thought of hackerspaces specifically but yeah i think i think yeah uh you look at you look at the standard hotel model and yeah how many how many hotels have you know a banquet room or how many hotels have a uh you know a a, a business center where you can get a private you know a semi-private room there i i think that'd be an amazing idea too because i mean you could you could then multi-purpose uh, you know, some of these, some of these rooms, um, you know, especially if you don't, you know, if you have low occupancy, because I mean, in the end, you know, you need to make some money here. And while I, I love the idea of being able to rent a room for uh, 10 euros, um, I just, I don't see that as a, as a plausible price point. Um, however, it is possible in, so, you know, we talk about, um, you know, other computer systems on board, the, the, or within, within the structure. Um, I think that some of the other folks, uh, have been talking about, um, 
you know, some of these these uh, uh, personal servers that are out there that you can you can buy this little box mm -hmm. and you can load some software on it and you get this personal this personal server that you can use. Um, and then that same idea, you know, scale that up a little bit to a community, you know, so we, we talk about uh, the multiple Pasnias that we have, you know, there, there are multiple permanent autonomous zones um, that uh, that we're operating. And so having an interconnected network of those, I think would be would be really nice to have um, because they're both trust, they're all trusted partners, um, I, I would think. Uh, and and then adding adding those data services like you know secure email secure file sharing secure uh, file storage um, you know all the things that that we we do with our cryptocurrencies uh, can apply to just about everything else too um, and being able to to rent that digital realm space if you will uh, to to store that information and to keep that information secure and private um, and there's a lot of technology right now like. You know, if you had, you know, seven PASNIA sites, there's nothing that says that you have to keep um, the all the data in one spot. You can literally partition that data off to each one of those other sites. And so some type of, a, I would say, it, it looks like a peer-to-peer -peer network, or I guess it'd be more like distributed storage, you know? So instead of having everything all in one spot, it, every piece is out there and and only, uh, you know, only a, a, a private key can, can pull that data back together so that you can access it. Um, I think right. all of these are, are really important things. Right, and and I think one one of the downsides, if I recall, and this might not be the case anymore, but because um, it's been a couple of years, I guess it's been a little while since I've kept up with and, and yeah, kept up with it. And the crypto anarchy space is always rapidly progressing. But um, I think one of the downsides with like some of the decentralized file sharing platforms that are out there now is that yeah, they are decentralized in that you know multiple people have them on their computers. But if everyone deletes that copy from their from their hard drive for whatever reason, um, then I think they can be gone forever. You have the hash for it. That, that's stored on the blockchain forever, but as far as the actual video itself, it's not being hosted somewhere. So um, something like this, and it's something I, it's what I envision with the Pasnia library more expansively. Um, well, the physical library would be great too, but digitally, um, if we have these places, you know, all over the place and storage is cheap, um, then that's automatically, you know, eight or ten or a dozen, et cetera, et cetera. You know, however many, uh, you know, Pasnias there are, however many of these note these Notel data centers there are, um, that's how many copies can be stored. So I think that's a really, really powerful, um, really powerful possibility. The other thing I wanted to bring up is that um, if we're talking about a proxy merchant role, and this person's going to have their property, you know, they're they're going to be paying property taxes. They've got their business license. They do, they they you know they they play the game um, to do what they need to do. Um, well, what about you know if if this if we're talking about you know a big industrial park or a big a big apartment complex, um, you probably have an extra room that you could run some crypto mining rigs in, right? And uh, these could serve as dual purpose. Um, some people heat their houses or, you know, heat rooms with, with their crypto, crypto miners. And there's also just the fact that um, if you're going to be integrated in the first realm, then you're probably, yeah, you, you can write this shit off on your taxes, right? Um, all that electricity cost generated by the, um, by the mining rigs. I mean, if you're going to be a proxy merchant, you know, operating in the first and the second realm, you know, um, I mean, I'd say use it to your advantage as, as much as you possibly can. What do you think? Yeah, I definitely agree with you on that. I, I think that, uh, you know, the, I, I'm a big, huge fan of waste, not want not kind of a ideology there. And I think crypto mining could be the, at least at the initial outset, be the thing that makes the, the whole idea possible. Uh, because you're not going to, you're not going to have it first, you're not going to have all these people who know exactly where you are. And, and, you know, the, the same thing of, uh, you know, uh, economic, uh, economics, you know, you know, you have this thing and this person is in that same area to use that thing, you know, when, how often is that going to happen? You know, um, and so you, you're going to need something to offset those costs. We've talked about, you know, renting the extra rooms. Um, we've talked about, you know, uh, other delivery services, but yeah, I think a crypto mining rig, um, not only, not only would you be able to dedicate, you know, a lot of space to it, I suppose, um, with, you know, rates being what they are right now, I think that, uh, you know, it's definitely a way to, if not make profit, uh, on top of profit, um, which I don't really like to use the word profit just because it has that uh, uh, that that weird, you know, uh, connotation of exploiting other people. Uh, I, I prefer to call it, you know, storage of value. But but you know, increasing your storage uh, capacity of value there, uh, I, I think a, a crypto mining rig 
um, could really help offset uh, a lot of those, uh, you know, we talk about the property taxes because they're everywhere, uh, potential sales taxes as well. Um, I personally don't want to charge people sales tax. So I'd probably, I'd probably go ahead and eat those costs if it were me. Uh, just because, you know, I, I don't, uh, I, I find sales tax usage, I find taxes in general just to be, a, you know, an evil thing. And while I would rather not, you know, give give the, the monster that is the, the state uh, more resources, I think a lot of it, you know, we talked, you were just talking about it, is writing those, writing those off uh, as in a business expense. So therefore, you're, you're, you're giving them a much smaller piece than they normally would have. Mm -hmm. uh in in that um because there there are a lot of other costs i mean you know the the, the proxy merchant not only is, do they have a property that they have to maintain that's you know having a maintenance person come and address or walk through uh you know you've also got um maintenance costs for for um you know in in hashtag agora you know then goes in there and he's looking in the room making sure everything is good you know toothpaste toothbrush towels you know they're all that standard stuff i think a lot of folks um will want you know uh unless of course you know they're big they're big fans of uh hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy and they bring their own towel um you know having having those things uh there uh is is an additional cost and you're going to have people who walk away with stuff it's it is it is the thing that happens you know mm -hmm. um it, at least you know i i would i would hope reputable volumes would would respect other people's i mean respect the 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 property owner and going, yeah, you know, listen, I, it's your towel. I appreciate your use for it. That's what I'm paying the room for is for the use of the towel. Those kind of things, uh, dishes, maybe I, I don't know forks, knives, um, because who, who doesn't like a, a nice little, uh, anonymous delivery to, to the house or to the, to the place for food, um, so that they don't have to go out and expose themselves. Um, you know, and then there's there's obviously insurance. You know that that has to be on the property. Um, commercial insurance is is typically a little bit more expensive. Although I still think that all things being equal, I still think that um, when it comes down to providing value to a venue, and um, I think you, you're going to still do better than than the retail cost of a of a hotel room. Um, uh, you know, given the fact that you know your your hotel room is not private, it's not safe, it's not secure. Uh, and, and maybe there is a premium price that, that, that could be charged, um, you know, to keep, to buy another property. I mean, that's, that's what a lot of people, I think, you know, they don't, they don't think beyond the here and now mm -hmm. they don't realize that, oh yeah, this, this proxy merchant has some other expenses, or maybe that proxy merchant wants to, to do, to develop more properties. Cause I mean, it, it's expensive. I mean, especially cause we're talking cities. Um, another thing that had, uh, you know, we were talking uh, earlier about, uh, you know, apartments and homes. I, I think another thing, you know, and I think you kind of said it a little bit there is industrial zones. Um, how cool would it be to repurpose a warehouse? Uh, you know, a warehouse would be an awesome thing. People are storing their stuff there anyway. Why not also have a place where, you know, people, uh, Vanuans can go to and, and, Store and themselves. you know, be on site. <laughs> I know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, exactly. And I think, I think that, you know, when, when we were looking at Rayo and, and what he was talking about and, and city Vanu and, and trying to, or urban Vanu and trying to figure out what that looks like and how do we, how do we get there? You know, how do we provide that, that trade space, um, you know, uh, that Rayo would, would, would probably have loved to have had, you know, that secure trade space where he could, you know, he could store his, his trade. Uh, he could, uh, you know, even, even now, you know, digitally sell his trade by just putting it in a storage locker uh, of, of the appropriate size um, and, you know, have have a bizarre style uh, directory where people could buy things and, uh, you know, they could go and acquire those things without even having to talk to somebody. So um, I, I think that 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 is a possibility too, is, is the industrial repurposing the industrial site um, to, to provide uh, habitation, you know. Yes, for sure, for sure. And, and Kyle and I have talked a lot about, I think that's, you know, we, we've talked quite a bit about the industrial zones. I see, other than like the, you're, they're super expensive because there's a lot of square footage, obviously. But, uh, uh, you know, it's no different than the aircraft carrier that I hope I hope a, a fellow of a new inner self liberator purchases at some point. Because um, I would like to have oh, a, yeah. an aircraft carrier to go to go uh, um, to go venture to out in the middle of international waters. But um, you know, you know, Bitcoin, uh, you crypto know, moons. Then you know, 
Well, I think we'll have some of those, some of those folks. Um, a, 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 I guess a, a redistribution of wealth per se, but not in the uh, communistic <laughs> involuntary sense. Yeah. But uh, yeah, um, yeah. The, so right. there Value was value. yeah there there was um, so there was something that's come up a couple times, and um, and, and you mentioned uh, um, you know uh, replacement cost for towels or, or something like that. Um, I, I kind of foresee at least for. Well, I don't know. Anyway, um, it's like for the policies and procedures or rules for tenants or tenants or renters, um, I, I, I do see no tells making their way onto the PASNA directory, which would mean that they'd be for vetted individuals. Um, and obviously, it's if the pro entrepreneur and proxy merchant wants it, wants, them, wants it to be listed on the directory, of course. But uh, yeah, as far as marketing it, um, I, I, and it's, it's kind of what we're doing with the PASNA network right now is we're creating, we're kind of creating the market, creating the demand. Um, getting the network together and I guess together connected and um, I guess ideas expanded at this point but um, I kind of think at, at some point marketing won't won't entirely be necessary because people that are in the network will just need the services like that's why that's why we're that's why we're, we're you know we're building the network is because we need these things um, so I'm not I'm not sure marketing will be a, a, a huge critical part down the road um, I don't think so um, which would limit if, if it's only, uh, and the point I'm getting to is if it's only vetted and trusted Venuans or self liberators, then, um, then they would understand, you know, the tenants of security culture. If they're in a, if they're in a, in a house with that's, you know, divided between, you know, rented out to four people or whatever, they would understand security culture, not know not to be, uh, you know, be, be loud and crazy and, and get the, get the bludgies called by the neighbors. Um, but hopefully, hopefully you can choose, hopefully the proxy merchant in question could choose somewhere. Um, and take that into account. Uh, that would certainly be certainly be the, the best alternative. But um, I don't know, kind of rambling, but at the same time, I, I, I think the marketing will take care of itself once we build out the network, we build out the directory, and people just need these things because, um, yeah, they need them. Yeah, I think I think uh, you know we, we take a page again from from hashtag uh, Agora, and we talk about um, you know how. Um, Oh man, I forget the main character's name. It's just uh, Daniel. Daniel. Yeah. Uh, that how, how yeah how Daniel you know he's lo he logs into uh, logs into you know one of these one of these chat channels there and and they're feeding him all this information and I think I think a lot of that is I mean we have some of that uh, already within uh, you know our private communication systems so that we can share this kind of information like oh hey listen I'm going to be in this this place. Uh, you know, during these times, uh, does anybody know of any place where I could stay? You know, I think word of mouth is probably going to be the best marketing. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's like you kind of have to have, I, I think, at least, I mean, you're, you're already building the infrastructure to have uh, automated transaction. So, you know, client wants to rent a room. You have a computer system that's basically doing the whole the whole thing. And it doesn't I mean, it, it really, to me, doesn't make a whole lot of, of sense not to also include, you know, some type of a, a virtual access point, um, you know, a, a lockdown secure web server kind of a, a idea there. Um, no frills, you know, no no huge. Uh, 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 personally, I, I don't think you should have a whole lot of um, applications, you know, so-called applications. Uh, it, it just should be stripped down, just, you know, uh, ease of use. Uh, easy to, to use kind of things um, that would act as your marketing. Uh, I mean, initially, uh, you could mm -hmm. you could do that. I mean, a lot a lot right now. We talked about Airbnb. Um, so there's there's Airbnb, and then there's also a lot of folks. Uh, there's a lot of other integrated systems out there as well um, that you can you can all network all of that stuff and funnel all of that to you know your potential your potential hotel um, as well. Not necessarily. It's one of those business decisions that has to be made. If I need if I need money, I'd, I'd probably rent to people that I I, I wouldn't necessarily have uh, rented to, just because uh, you know the, the the capital is required to to maintain the property. Um, absent that, then yeah, we would prefer our preferred client, which would be a, of a new and um, or some other uh, you know safety and security conscious individual. Right, right, and I'm thinking of another use case here too. Uh, something that a lot of energy and thought is being that, that's being put or being put towards right now is the um, what I call the Pasadena Department of Transportation, or uh, more generically, just a decentralized uh, logistics and delivery network. 
Um, I mean, there, there's another use case right there, right? You know, if we've got traveling venues all the time, you know, delivering stuff, they're going to need places to stay sometimes. I mean, they don't want to stay in their van some night. And they've got this, and you know, they've got a, um, you know, a, a, a no-tell they can go stay at no instead. Time. Maybe they're recording, maybe they're, maybe they're doing recording somewhere they need they're good internet connection, and they can stop and go to one of these, you know, go to one of these no-tells instead. So that's, that's another use case is just, uh, you know, um, and that's, that's how a lot of this stuff is. It all feeds into each other because we're building a network, and all these things are necessary to the network, and, and that's, that's why they're, they're kind of coming together. But um, it looks like, uh, I know you said you had, you had an hour, we've got about, so we've got about 10 minutes. Um, I want to make sure to, to really, um, I guess, really make, make the most of this time. Um, the, last, the last note that we, that we had on here, and uh, I guess I'll conclude. Um, I mentioned the policies and procedures and rules for tenants and, and renters. Um, I don't think those are going to be as necessary since, since, they're gonna, since I, I do foresee a lot of it being vetted with new ones at least initially, or at least down the road, whatever you want to think about it. Um, yeah. Um, so what about what about pricing? Um, I know in, in the hashtag Agora section, they said, you know, 10, 10 euros a night, um, 10, and he kind of went through the math. But uh, um, what are you thinking in terms of uh, in terms of pricing? So I think, I think honestly, in terms of pricing, it, it's, it's really a math formula. I mean, um, you know, an entrepreneur, you know, they want to create capital so that they can continue to invest. And so there's a balance between, um, you know, how much money could I get and how much money do I need to get, you know, and trying to balance that out. Uh, I think that in, at some times of the year that, you know, just like typical uh, hotels, there's going to be people that are not traveling, you know, and then at other times there's going to be lots of travelers. And, and so it, it's really a floating, I think even, even now it's a floating price point. You know, we say, oh, here's the advertised price. Oh, but you, 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 you had this, this person here that, uh, or this, this company that you, you've done business with before. So they're going to give you a discount. Um, Honestly, we're not going to know what the price point is going to be because there are just so many variables. I mean, you know, the difference between a, a no tell in New York City, which mm -hmm. honestly would probably have a, a have a much a much uh, higher uh, mean time to to uh, 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 harassment uh, just because there's so many people there, and compared to say, oh, I don't know, Manchester, New Hampshire, where you know you got a hundred thousand people living there in you know this small little area. Uh, the prices are going to be different because the costs are different. So uh, I think that at the high end, I would say that, you know, look at look at what the hotel prices are. I think that would probably be the highest. Mm -hmm. um, we're not going to have we're not going to have marketing expenses for the most for the most part, you know, and unlike unlike hotels, um, you know, we have other income streams coming in. We've got our cryptocurrency mining rig. We've got our uh, post office box, you know, mail forwarding service. You know, we got supply caching. You know, we've got you know, all of these, these other additional income streams that offset those expenses. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and I think that, you know, you help somebody out and they'll help you out. You know, if, if, if you can give them a really good deal, I think they'll take it. And I don't think we need to, we don't, we don't need to, to, I would say the word profit. Uh, we don't need to profit off of each other. Mm -hmm. um, we need to exchange value for value, you know? Um, and, and that's, that's where I would sit uh, at least. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm totally with you. Totally yeah, with yeah. you. And uh, something I'm, I'm working on. We're working on here as, as part of one possible income stream for Veritas Pasnia, is us. Uh, some people are might familiar with uh, Hip Camp. Um, well, we don't want to. We don't charge people charge self liberators of venues to camp out here. Um, but at some point, we're going to charge you know normies to camp out here, um, trying to off offset any costs mm -hmm. um, and funnel more of that first round money into the second realm. So maybe that's another way to think of it too. Is if, mm -hmm. if it's an apartment complex, maybe you offset or maybe you fund the second realm venture with the first realm. Uh, maybe you're able to pull that off, right? Like maybe you can, maybe you can fund, maybe you can fund the second realm venture with the first realm venture, and basically maybe only charge cost um, to you know venuans or something, and then they can donate beyond that if they want to or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then as you said, the other the and other income streams too. But yeah, try try to funnel as much of that first realm money as possible into the second realm. And, and offset those costs. I think it's it's totally feasible. 
Yeah, I, I agree. And again, I think that's why the the apartment complex is a is a, a or even you know even a hotel that that was re, repurposed. You know, um, any one of those ideas, I think, really would would help. Uh, you know, decrease that mean time to harassment because you you look like everybody else. You you look like you know you have transient people coming back and forth. You know, you, you don't have you know the same people living there all the time. But I think having you know, people living there all at the same time, or having regular people living there all all the time, um, also kind of gives you that that uh, uh, that that cover that you need, um, so that you don't look like what you are. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, indeed, indeed. Um, so I'm trying to think if there's anything else on pricing. Um, <laughs> I can't really think of anything else on pricing other than, as we talked about a little bit ago, um, if you're able, if, if you aren't, if, if, uh, so if you aren't necessarily going the proxy merchant route, is like in, in the, in terms of business and you just have, you know, a, a house that you, you have, you, you've converted four to rooms and you, four, four many apartments or something along, the, along those lines that you want to rent out. Um, <laughs> Not sure where I was going with that, but, but I mean, it would definitely give you some space for for Venuans to be able to park their vehicles and stuff. Yeah. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah, large apartment complexes usually have that space too. So, um, and and you know, that's something that you oh yeah, that, that's free that's that's what I was, that's what I was going to mention. You get you could pass on the savings if if you aren't going to go the commercial route. Um, you could pass on those savings too because if you think about how much how much of the, the like if you're renting a hotel room, how much of that cost is factored? How much how much of like regulation ad adherence is factored into that cost? Um, <clears throat> and you know, um, mm -hmm. and and going and making sure all the permits are are, are obtained and. Um, standards uh, maintained, all all that sort of stuff. So yeah, I think I think uh, I think in terms of pricing, it's it would it would it could be prof very profitable for a proxy merchant, an entrepreneur, but also um, a savings um, for for self operators and venuans. So I think it's it's an all all around yeah. um, all around win, and it's there's no there's no better there's no better time for it than now. And uh, there's I mean there's only going to become more and more of a need for for things like these. So um, it's a great time to have the conversation. I'm glad we did. Um, I so guess I. any any closing any closing thoughts anything else you'd like to uh, um, to to end with before before I let you go? No, I think we pretty much touched on everything that I I had in my bag. Yeah, yeah, I agree, I agree. Um, and we don't have to go through all the details, really. Um, what I found is you just you just basically lay out some ideas and people start thinking and and things happen. Um, so it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's great to see. It's great to see. So, um, JJ, I look forward to seeing you and, and chatting with you more in the, in the Pasnia Telegram, uh, Committee of Correspondence chat. Um, I guess, uh, is there, is there any, any, uh, anywhere else you'd, I, I usually let people plug, uh, you know, if they got a website or podcast or whatever, but is there anywhere you'd like to send the, the listeners to that, uh, somewhere, somewhere of yours or somewhere you find, find a value? Uh, I find I find value in and of course you know uh, letting everybody know that you know if you haven't read hashtag Agora you definitely definitely it's it's worth the value in my opinion uh, to to purchase that through uh, Liberty Under Attack Publications. Fantastic, perfect. Well, thanks a lot, man. I, I appreciate it, and maybe sometime uh, in the in the future we'll we'll uh, come up with another uh, great podcast idea to to chat about. So thanks a lot for coming on, and uh, yeah, I'll, we'll. We'll uh, reconvene in the in the passing chat here here soon. Okay, thank you. All right, um, all right, guys. Thanks so much for tuning into this episode of the Vonnie Podcast. Uh, as always, if you're new here, uh, you can find our full archives on your favorite podcatcher, uh, or just visit the website for all things Vonnie. Uh, that URL is Vonnie Podcast. Dot com. Uh, there you can also find free Vani books, a frequently asked questions list, uh, the Vani beginner's guide, and much more. Uh, you can also snag the book discussed today, uh, hashtag Agora from Liberty Attack Publications. Uh, the paperback is available individually, uh, or you can snag it as part of our Liberty Fiction bundle. And uh, hopefully sometime in this life, uh, Aura and I will get around to finishing the audiobook. Uh, just maybe. I've, I've, I've pondered putting together like a really, really not even going for Audible and trying to make it like a really interesting, engaging presentation. But I won't say anything else on that right now because it's not done. Uh, not even in the works, in the process of being done. But uh, lastly, if you're looking to join the second realm in physical or digital fashion, uh, check out what we're building here at the Free Republic of Pasnia. Uh, Pasnia.com is the place to go for all things the Free Republic. 
uh, including the recent re- recently released 2021-2022 uh, Stakeholder Bulletin. Uh, you can also read and sign the Pasnia Declaration of Independence uh, Constitution, uh, the, view the Self-Liberation Diaries, uh, our Visitor's Guide, and more. Uh, again, the website is pasnia.com, and to join the Pasnia Committee of Correspondence Telegram chat mentioned numerous times today, uh, just visit t.me forward slash Pasnia chats. Uh, I think that's all I have for you. Uh, always remember, Vani was yours for the making, and the Second Realm is yours for the building. Cheers. Rayo was right. Freedom does indeed need more full-time professionals, not collective movement preachers seeking a coterie of followers, but explorers, inventors, developers of liberated life ways. Undoubtedly, numerous folks are truly seeking a way out of the survival society, but they don't see any options outside of political crusading or apathy. Many are being emotionally and physically broken down by the 9 to 5 grind, the daily pressures of the servile society, and the recognition of how truly unfree they really are. That being the case, our task as Venuans now becomes self-liberation and marketing in that order. Reason being, if we were ever going to see an alternative economy, a sovereign free port, a new libertarian country, or whatever other grandiose strategy comes into fruition, we need to first break people free from the servile society and into a lifestyle change of their choosing. Additionally, if we are ever going to see the abolition of the state, we must do our damnedest to eliminate the market demand for it. A great way to do that is by showing individuals that there are other options, and to help them in the process as much as possible. Some entrepreneurs may even be able to monetize such a venture in the form of consulting, or the development of tools or services to ease the transition from the first realm to the second realm. Rayo's first book, Vanu the Search for Personal Freedom, was initially published in 1983. 35 plus years later, many of these strategies are just as practical now as they were then, if not more so thanks to the evolution of technology. Yet, some recommendations he and others posited are extremely outdated, destined to fail in the modern day. Vanu is based upon reality, not legality, and therefore, it will develop according to the external factors of the present time. Freedom is not free. It takes time, effort, money, an extreme amount of dedication, and a willingness to make sacrifices. It requires the willingness and ability to create, develop, and to problem solve, as we are the self-liberators of the 21st century, pioneering the path forward to a freer future. It is not for everybody, and neither is Vani. There's no better way to end this book than with these wise, timeless words from our friend and posthumous mentor, Rayo. Quote, a Vanuan to me is not just someone living in a particular manner. Lifestyles may change. A lifestyle which was Vanu 100 years ago may not be Vanu today. Some lifestyles Vanu today were not possible 100 years ago and may not be Vanu 50 years from now. A Vanuan is someone who places a high value on relative invulnerability to coercion. Someone for whom freedom is worth a fair amount, though not infinite, of effort, inconvenience, discomfort. To a Vanuan, Vanu is not just a means to other ends, nor is it an ultimate end. Like most qualities of life and life itself, it is both. A Vanuan will choose whatever way of living offers personal sovereignty, and will change lifestyle again and again if necessary." End quote. Your free future is closer than you think. This was an excerpt from my book, Vanu, A Strategy for Self-Liberation, available in the Self-Liberation Bundle. Just visit libertyunderattack.com forward slash SL Bundle to snag every book we offer at a huge discount. Currently 18 books. Again, libertyunderattack.com forward slash SL Bundle is where to go to pick that up. And to view our full catalog, please visit libertyunderattack.com. LUA Publications. Share your story. Find your freedom.